Okay, thanks for checking out my Behringer BCA 2000 that I have for sale on eBay. I just wanted to show you a couple quick things here uh, to get you familiar with it if you're not familiar with the, these type of audio recording interfaces. Um, right off the bat, it's a digital interface. It's something that uh, you always need if you're going to do any kind of uh, recording, audio recording with a computer. Straight out, you can use this as a standalone uh, without any computer. I don't have it hooked up at all to a computer. It's just, uh, I'm going to show you real quickly a simple, and it's a simple standalone kind of mixer, uh, nothing elaborate. Um, if there was like some kind of big production, uh, of course I would use a full-blown mixer. But just to show that this can be in a pinch used for a standalone, I have my iPod plugged into the stereo uh, I.O. of uh, the second track. And uh, you can hear that through my monitor system. Uh, I have the control room. It has two monitor sections. It has uh, two amplifiers for headphones here and also a control room output besides the main output of the unit. But just standalone, you can only use uh, the headphones or the monitor out um, in this type of mode. So I have that going right there. And then I put my keyboard into the guitar input in this. So I got three, essentially what you got is three analog inputs. It also can include, incorporate a digital input as well into this kind of mix. But here I have that going. And then I got my keyboard here. Here and there, and you can throw also a microphone in here. Um, each input allows you uh, in in, the, in this this uh, left side allows you either a balanced mic uh, with a mic preamp. Let me kill that for a second. As a mic preamp uh, and phantom power. Both channels here have phantom power. Um, and it has uh, line inputs for each and that, that is balanced as well as unbalanced inputs. Uh, then you have the stereo input here or you can take that away and have two microphones. You can juggle the kind of inputs but ultimately it gives you three out of the combination, three analog inputs and uh, I think one digital. A, um, depending on the kind of digital input if it's but if or ADAT. ADAT will give you eight inputs and uh, spud if gives you two. So uh, that's on a standalone uh, kind of basis where you can mix. Um, the good thing about this kind of setup is um, when you're on a computer and you have software it's really difficult to use a mouse and then change the faders, you know, jump around and click here. You can't really operate that way when you're doing a mix. That's why you a uh, hard surface is, is light years ahead of when you're interfacing the two. It gives you a hard control surface that's interfaced through USB and uh, then what you're doing in here is replicated here and vice versa. This is a uh, DA and AD, so it, it's uh, analog to digital, digital to analog conversion. It gives you uh, 100 millimeter faders, three of them, and 100 millimeter faders are way better than smaller ones because you could do nice gradual fades in and out like a professional rather than some short kind of fader that you're you're trying to uh, get it right and it steps too quickly. Um, these have much more resolution 
and being able to fade in and out. So let me show you how this works now interfacing. Obviously USB and Windows always has its issues. You got to make sure when you're doing monitors that you always have the volumes down on monitors. You never want to put a pop through your system and hurt your speakers. The USB setup, uh, Windows has, has always had little issues where you have to uh, first install the drivers before plugging in the USB. You may know that, otherwise it, go, it tries to uh, interpret what you're trying to do and goes, oh, you got a human interface device and you know it never picks the right one. So you always got to sort of lead it through and sometimes it'll kick out the USB. So that's sort of a nature of Windows. This was originally intended for XP. Um, I got it successfully working with Windows 7. And this is Windows 7 Professional 32-bit with no, with no problems. So basically I plug in the USB and then you turn the unit on and the driver will load you see it pop up here's the driver for this device and it says Behringer BCA 2000 and this is the hard control for the unit the driver control and in it has some tabs uh, various setups and information and it tells you right here what uh, bit rate, sampling rate rather it's it's connected to pretty much there's a default there and you just leave it alone you have to tweak it sometimes uh, has late driver latency, buffer size adjustment uh, just leave that there then you open whatever your favorite software in this case I'm using Adobe Audition uh, just because I have it and it's a really nice easy thing to do and um, I'm going to open a session here and there we go so now um, these two are interfaced and we're doing something a little different now where I have a track here that I put in here. I'll show you how I did this. Uh, I imported a track. Now of course this is the software I'm using. You can use any kind of software you want. I'm selling this. But I am including with the purchase of this Adobe Audition 1.5 which you can use to upgrade to the newer version 3. I think it's $99. I'm not sure. But it's upgradable. And it's brand new in the box. Uh, you can see it over there in the corner. Adobe Audition 1.5. Brand new in the box. Wrapper. Uh, I have one of these. I have two of these actually. These Behringer uh, BCA 2000s. Uh, I'm keeping one, I'm selling one. Brand new in the box is the one that's listed there on eBay. So I'm going to grab this song here and I'm now I'm going to drag that into this track just to show you how easy something like this goes down on these kind of things. And then now if I play this, you can hear it there. Now, um, you can have, let's say I did that, I recorded it, I just obviously just grabbed something pre-made and put it in there, and then I want to now play and build tracks. Um, and in the digital world, um, of course, in software, you have unlimited tracks. I mean, I can go up to 100 tracks. So keep that in mind. So here I have just visual here, two tracks. Obviously, uh, if I shrink this down, you'll see all the other tracks that I can load in there for the, to illustrate. Uh, let's just do that. And I'm going to arm one track. 
And then now in that track, I could be singing or I could have uh, other instruments. Um, I would have my keyboard already hooked in there, so I have this going on. Okay, so I can then play this, and with headphones on, if you have some good uh, headphones, I would plug headphones in here, wear them. I can do a mix here where I turn this off, the control room monitors, and just listen to the headphones. And I'm hearing this track while I'm laying down the other tracks. And that's how it's done in a studio. So if I had that, then I would just arm one track. This track is, is uh, in safe mode, so it's not going to be overwritten. So I go ahead and hit record. And it's playing the one track. while I lay down my mix. And then um, I can play them back. And then you hear my mix in there also. So basically um, that's some of the stuff that you can do, really easy to do, the importance of this. Uh, as opposed to trying to do a mix here where you're just trying to move faders with a mouse, uh, that's what a hard surface is able to do for you. Now, on the other hand, there's some other points also to, to be made that a digital interface like this, uh, not only is it essential when you're doing work with a computer and having a recording studio in a computer because you, somehow you have to get that signal into the computer. This is the way to do it. You have to have some type of interface. An interface with faders and individual pots, sort of like a mixer kind, is much more, uh, it provides much more options and uh, makes the process smoother than other interfaces. And that's why I chose this interface for my um, personal things. I just ended up with two and I'm selling one. But um, it is 24-bit. Sampling goes all the way up from 44 to 96 kilohertz. Keeping in mind uh, your typical CD is 16-bit at 44 kilohertz. This gets you into studio grade workflow.